Hello everybody, welcome to another Diamond Report, again brought to you by Baden Baseball, the official postseason baseball for NSA High School Baseball. Um, check them out if you have not done so already. Let's dive right into this week. Um, <clears throat> first of all, for everybody, coaches, ADs, and umpires, I want to remind, especially coaches and umpires, you have the most control over this, pace of play. Umpires, again, make sure you're getting the, the teams on the clock, a minute between innings, as soon as that third out is registered, we're starting the clock, get the, the warm-up pitches done, get the infield done, and get that game moving, keep the game moving. Also, umpires, keep your batters and pitchers um, on that 22nd mark uh, throughout the game. Keep the games moving. We, this is a really important piece. I had a conversation with the NFHS last week. Uh, pace of play was brought up, and essentially what we see at the MLB level with pitch clocks and all these different clocks that are involved now and in, in trying to time and um, play things um, faster and quicker at the baseball in baseball. Uh, we essentially already have a lot of these parameters in place at the high school level. It's just that it's not as visible with an actual clock up on the scoreboard. So let's take advantage of those tools. Keep the games moving, especially with the weather we've had. Coaches, make sure you're also keeping your kids moving in and out of the dugout, also between pitches. I am going to attach a few reminders um, about the DH rule, both the traditional DH and then the new player DH. Um, I get this from referee.com. It's a document that if you as a coach um, are having questions or, or thoughts about how to utilize the DH, I would suggest reviewing this. And then also umpires, I'd suggest you look it over so that you're fully aware of the different ways the DH can be used throughout the baseball season. Finally, for everybody, um, probably more ADs than anybody. Next week, April 3rd through the 8th, is Officials Appreciation Week for our spring activities. So if you're hosting some baseball games next week, make sure you take the time to do something special for our officials and show them how much we appreciate them working and taking time out of their personal lives to work. Um, but also it's a, just a general reminder too and how we need to teach our kids and the team um, in general on how to treat umpires, but then even further than that, how our fans should be treating officials. So make sure we blow that up locally if you are hosting games, announcements, how you treat the officials, maybe call out special attention to them and thank them for everything they're doing. Now for umpires. Again, we've got the three-person uh, umpire clinic coming up on Sunday, April 30th. If you have not registered yet and you are going to work postseason or want to work postseason, I advise you get into this clinic. It's going to be in Lincoln again on Sunday the 30th. Uh, it'll be a great opportunity to learn from other umpires as well as get reps out on the field. Continue to put your schedules in, umpires. Continue to uh, monitor if you're going to want to work postseason. Get that application in by next Friday, April 7th. Um, and then, umpires, I want you to take a minute this weekend if you have not done so already. There was an ejection during the last few days of spring training involving catcher JT Real Muto. And, and um, umpires, I'd like for you to go to YouTube, just type in JT Real Muto, Real Muto ejection. And then I want you to watch it. Watch it in its entirety. I threw some questions in this um, diamond report, some things to consider. And I think it's important for umpires to slow things down when, when we get maybe triggered a little bit or when a coach is acting out or when a player is acting out. Ask yourself some questions. Number one, do I have all the facts? And I think you'll see in this ejection specifically, the umpire didn't have all the facts. Okay, And he got triggered quickly. Secondly, have you seen the entire situation unfold? Believe it or not, sometimes ejections occur that I get to deal with, and I'll ask an umpire about it, and they don't really recall specifics on what was said or yelled. Okay, Make sure you have all the facts. Make sure you've seen the entire situation. Third, have you garnered the respect of the people around you through your words and actions? Because if you have, you'll probably, when you're handling these sticky situations, and they're hard and maybe the ejection is warranted, they will go more smoothly, if that's possible. How about flat out, is an ejection warranted in this situation? Did JT Real Muto deserve to be ejected for what he did? And then finally, anytime we have an ejection, there's probably going to be fallout. Is the fallout justified because the ejection was not warranted? And again, that's the ones that I get to deal with where there's questions or there's concerns and we have to look at, was the ejection warranted? Um, is there fallout because we have a party that believes it was not warranted? So these are things to consider because any part of the fallout would be in an ejection in, at our level is that if a coach gets ejected, they sit out the next game. 
Um, same with a player, from sportsmanlike conduct. So there is going to be fallout. And so we have to slow down and make sure things are warranted. Again, I just thought of everybody as I looked at this, these clips from the, the Real Muto situation this last week. Take a look at it. I think it's a great learning opportunity. Finally, for coaches, ADs, and schools, reminder, if you, as you have postponements, cancellations, continue to communicate to me. If you're going to have a tournament and you have weather, communicate with me. I'll help you figure things out. If you got questions before you make a call, make sure you talk to me. I'm glad to help. With that, everybody have a good weekend, and we'll see you soon.